Maps are one of my favorite projects to make with my laser cutter and it's a product that a lot of laser owners will sell in their shops. The hardest part of making a layered map piece is figuring out the most efficient way of creating each of the layers. In the past, I've used a free app called Snazzy Maps where I would take screenshots of a specific layer that I created, bring it into a different software, and extract each layer from the image. This process worked, but there were so many steps to follow and it took a long time to generate one map. Recently, a company reached out to me called Laser Map Maker, which I'll link in the description of this video. Today, we're going to try out the app that they developed to create layered maps with a laser cutter and see if it makes this process easier and faster. To get to the website, you can Google Laser Map Maker or type it into your web browser. It's also linked in the description of this video. It'll bring you to this website where you can make an account. There are three different levels for creators of all types. I'm using the professional version which comes with 108 credits every month. The credits are used to export the map layers and one layer costs one credit. Once you sign into your account, you can start a new project and title it whatever you want. For my project, I'll be making a map of Central Park in New York City. On the right side of the website, there's a search tool where we'll type in New York City. We can left click, hold, and drag to move the map until Central Park is at the center. A few icons down from the search tool, there's one with different aspect ratios where you can make the map a square or rectangles with different proportions. We'll go with a square for this project. Now we can create each layer for this city map project. Over at the left of the website, we can click add a new layer which brings up a window to select different graphic information. For this map, we'll start with all the roads and figure out which layers we want to keep later. At the top, I learned that you need to give the layer a title in order to create it. We'll call this layer roads. Just like that, we have all the major and minor roads as well as the walking paths in New York City. By clicking on a layer, it'll open up the subcategories of every type of road that's in the project. To figure out the layers, we can hover the mouse cursor over one layer and click on the three dots that appear at the right. Then click the eye symbol to turn off that sublayer. For most of the layers, I noticed that nothing happened and I wish that the platform made it easier to figure out which layers are associated with the lines on the map. Later in the video, we'll separate the minor roads from the major ones so that we can engrave it as the base layer. Now we'll see what's in the other layers. The topography layer creates an outline around the edge of New York City, but in theory it should show the changes of the ground heights of an area by cutting hills and mountains into different sections. The last layer is the water layer which outlines the major bodies of water in the map area. We'll use the road and water layers for this project. Now that we have the layers that we need for this project, let's separate the major and minor roads into two different groups. To do this, I click on a sub layer, set the color to red, and see what changes in the map. A majority of the sub layers didn't change, so I deleted them as I was going down the list. By the end, I only had a handful of road layers left. I decided to switch the thinner secondary roads to the water layer and made it red so I could engrave it onto the land. With a click of a button, we can export each layer as a SVG file. I open the layers in Adobe Illustrator to check if the file is correct and resize the layers from the 20 inch square to 10 inches so that it would fit in my laser cutter. What I think is amazing about these layers from Laser Map Maker is that the SVG file is already vectorized which means that they can easily cut the outlines of every layer. To test this, I only changed the size of the layers to 10 inch square and left everything else in the file. Next, I gather my materials and apply protective paper masking tape to its surfaces. I'll be using clear blue acrylic for the bottom layer, cherry plywood for the mid layer, and light colored 8th inch eco birch plywood for the top layer. I place it on the cutting bed of my laser cutter and start the process of cutting each layer. When I was sending the file to my laser cutter, I noticed that there were several extra layers with a handful of lines in them. Since they didn't affect anything that was being cut, I turned the layers off before sending the file to my laser cutter. 
Once you get the hang of using the website, it's easy to make lots of map files to laser cut. With the professional plan and the 108 monthly credits, you can make 54 maps with 2 layers or 36 maps with 3 layers. The 2 map layers took 40 minutes each to laser cut and the blue acrylic took a minute. It took roughly an hour and a half to laser cut and engrave this entire project. With all the pieces cut, I moved them to my work table and removed the paper masking tape from the street layer. This took a long time because of all the thin lines. I'm sure if I kept the map at a larger size, it would have made it easier and faster to remove the paper masking. I applied a natural oil finish to the mid layer, which consists of the land and engraved minor roads throughout the city. Now we're up to the easy part. I apply my maxi gear super glue to the back of the middle layer and I make sure to spread it throughout the larger pieces. I turn over the middle layer, align the border with the blue acrylic layer below, and press it into place. I apply glue to the top layer, turn it over, align it with the middle layer, and attach it to the middle layer. With that, this project is complete. I really enjoyed using the Laser Map Maker website to export the layers for this New York City map. There were some minor issues like the extra layers that I mentioned earlier, but it was a lot easier than the other apps that I've tried in the past. If you're interested in trying it out and want to support my channel, feel free to use my affiliate link in the description of this video. If you enjoyed this project, check out my other woodcraft videos and consider subscribing. I'll see you again next week.